Every year, tractors kill more people in farm-related accidents than anything else. Year in and year out, this is what's killing people, so it's up to you to pay attention and be a safe operator. I'm sure we have a bunch of new viewers now, so it's time again to go through all the ways your tractor can kill you and make you a safer operator. I asked you guys in a recent poll, a whole bunch of you responded, yes or no, have you put yourself in a dangerous situation when you've been under ballasted? You didn't have a bunch of weight on the backside or maybe the front of the tractor and you found yourself in a tippy situation? Over 80% of you folks have put yourself in a potentially life-threatening situation, surprising for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, well, it takes a big man or lady, well, small, that came out wrong. It takes a big, I thank you for being honest and saying that you put yourself in a dangerous situation because that's something that's, you know, that's, that's not a good idea to do. You know, I, I run a lot of ads on, uh, on Facebook for marketing and things like that and obviously put a lot of uh, videos out and I talk about ballast a decent amount, probably not as often as I should. Get a lot of comments saying, you don't need that. You have enough weight on there. Give me a break. My tractor's got plenty of ballast. I run 200 pounds on the back. That's all it needs, blah, 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 blah. Those are dangerous comments to listen to. Look at your tractor manual. It'll tell you how much ballast weight you need on the backside. Don't just wing it, go off the cuff, said it's always worked for me and that's fine. But the second reason it's surprising is because I do talk about ballast weight a lot and the importance of it. And so, it just tells me that even though I do talk about it, there's still a huge portion of my viewers that aren't listening. So it's time to talk about it again. And we're gonna run through some recent tractor accidents, more ways that your tractor can kill you. It's unfortunate. I was sent uh, a couple of things recently by, by viewers that follow along uh, with one um, acquaintance or, or somebody in their area that had died. Another one that could have potentially been killed very easily but just missed. And it's just amazing all the different ways that things can go wrong with the tractor, you know, and. I don't think our industry is talking about it enough. And so here we go. Let's run through the latest so it's on your mind and how you can be more diligent to protect yourself, get home safely to your family, have a good time on your tractor, but be able to get back out there the next day and do it again. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't matter your status in life. This can happen to anybody. The first person that recently died in a tractor accident was Keith Gaddis, uh, a Nashville songwriter and singer as well. He was pulling stumps with his tractor, okay? And he tied off, I'm, I'm assuming, because this has happened many times, tied off on his the back of his tractor above the rear axle point, okay? You have your rear axle, if you go above it, you potentially can tip your tractor back over when it's tied off to something. It's just, those tires are gonna keep turning, the front of the tractor is gonna come up, and it's gonna tip over on you. You need to be able to tie off down below that axle if you're gonna pull something and yank on a stump like that. So I think that's what happened in that situation there, and it's happened many times over, but it's worth mentioning again, Pay attention to your tie-off point if you're gonna be yanking on something, otherwise you could have a rollover accident very easily, and that's what happened there. Even Goldberg, remember the wrestler Goldberg? He didn't die, fortunately, but he did recently share a gash on his head. Don't even have the details on what happened with him other than it was a tractor-related accident that he had, so maybe, I don't know, wear a hard hat? Maybe that's where we're going with this one. Next up, a gentleman had a medical emergency driving down the road with his tractor and a set of pallet forks on the front. Problem was the tractor kept going and then the forks dug down into the road and it doesn't give all the details other than the fact that basically he was slumped over, the controls were still going, the tractor was still in gear and then an accident occurred. So this gets back to a video I did not long ago, potentially making a case that a hyd hydrostatic transmission is safer than a gear drive transmission because if you did have something really odd like this have in a medical emergency while you're driving along, a gear drive machine doesn't care. It's in gear and just going along. A hydrostatic machine, you have to physically push down on the pedal to make it move. And if that pressure comes off the pedal, it's just gonna stop. And so that could potentially be a safer scenario. You know, that's a kind of a wild one to happen, right? But still something to be aware of. Another one here, and again, even on flat ground, something bad can happen. This gentleman found a rut, just found a dip in the, in the ground, and it ended up being enough to overturn his tractor ended up killing him, he, he died because of that. And so this gets back to always being aware as an operator, if you can have more weight on your tractor to keep that center of gravity low and planted to the ground, it's going to improve your chances or maybe limit those chances of a rollover. Um, not to say it still can't happen and it lets you get off the hook on 
you know, daydreaming while you're on your tractor, but tractors are more dangerous than you would think. They're the number one cause of farm related deaths in the United States every year. Nothing else comes close. And it's worth mentioning all these accidents have happened in the last two or three weeks, something like that. This is not like over the last year or two. This is all just recent stuff when I was searching a couple things and they all just popped up. It's really crazy. Another one we don't talk about this enough. This gentleman was transporting hay bales from one property to the other and then lost control of the tractor as it was going downhill, all right? And we've mentioned if you have a four-wheel drive tractor and probably one of the benefits of getting a four-wheel drive tractor is being able to engage four-wheel drive. And then when you're braking and you need to slow down, that front axle is also helping along with the rear. If you're going downhill, you have a bunch of weight on the front of your tractor, it's even more likely for the back of the tractor to want to lift off the ground. So if the back tires are not on the ground, well, if you're only in two-wheel drive, you have no traction there doing anything. If you have four-wheel drive, then that front axle, those two tires are still going to help you stop or move or turn, all that kind of stuff. So it's another reason to get a four-wheel drive machine, but it's also something to be aware of on how you navigate hills, right? You need, shoot, we did it recently here. I was just moving um, a flail mower down this tiny little hill that I had here, and it was a big heavy weight that was hanging on the pallet forks up front. I decided to back down that hill instead of driving forwards down that hill. I probably would have been fine. I did it out of an abundance of caution, just because I know that things like this can happen. So slow down, think about what you're doing, and how your tractor can kill you. Okay, now, uh, it's easy, hindsight's 2020, as they say, right? So, um, when, you're, when you're listening to this, when you're reading things, it, it, I mean, everybody has the best intentions, all right? So, for whatever reason, this guy was working on his tractor while it was on. Uh, it says, checking the transmission fluid. I'm sure that there's more to the story than that, but somehow, when he was working on it, the tractor was on, it shifted into gear and ran over him. He didn't die, this gentleman, un uh, unfortunately, but uh, he was severely injured, actually went underneath the tractor's brush hog too. Fortunately, the brush hog wasn't operating, the PTO hadn't kicked on, but you know, I, I don't know what else to tell you. I think you guys can figure out all the other safety things that he could have done in this scenario, um, but nonetheless, Things can go wrong when you least expect it. Last one along those same lines, this elderly couple was working on their tractor you know, you, you got to block your tractor, right? Don't let it be able to move anywhere. Physically, physically block it so it can't move. Somehow they were working on it. It started to move. Uh, the, the wife got trapped and, and ran over and then so did the husband. The wife ended up dying and the husband was injured. So, I mean, this, this kind of stuff, it's, you know, your tractor doesn't have to be on, right? You could just be working on it. Maybe the loader's up high and hy hydraulics give and, and come down and whack you. There's just so many ways. And check out the other videos we've done too. And again, it's not to make you afraid of owning and operating a tractor, but I think that the reason that all these accidents happen is because there is a lack of safety and awareness and understanding out there. And you have a tendency, tractors are slow, right? And I think um, a lot of us are always in a rush. And so you have a tendency to try to get things done as quick as you can. And so you kind of forget or you think the chances are pretty good is nothing's gonna happen. And so you rush through things and that's when the accidents do happen. You know, and, and last one actually is, I mean, just a fluke, right? It's um, well, I think there's a, it shows why they say or have the stickers on a brush hog or a flail mower, stay back 150 feet or stay back 200 feet or whatever it is. Uh, this viewer actually, Early Riser, hope you don't mind me mentioning your handle, um, sent over his recent experience where he had a two inch dent put in a, a brush guard on his, uh, on his UTV. He was brush hogging an old field and there was a, just a, a hunk of steel like the end of a rod or something that went flying out from underneath his brush hog at high speeds and just whacked this thing. And, you know, fortunately nobody was hurt, but that could very easily happen. And I don't know, I don't know if he had guards on his brush hog or not. Um, you know, you can have rubber guards, you can have steel guards, you can have chain guards, all that kind of stuff. And those are meant to slow down flying objects, but even if you do have them, it doesn't mean it's going to stop everything. And so be aware as an operator, what you're cutting around. If there's, you know, somebody around nearby, I mean, they could be in the danger zone. Um, and then just be aware, even if you are, you know, those road crews, right? I always think about that every time I'm driving down a highway and there's a road crew mowing. I, I always am in I don't know why, hopefully it never happens, but something coming flying out right at my vehicle or somebody else's vehicle on the highway, it just seems like that's a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, so what can you do? Well, number one, ballast weight. That's what you can do. Add a lot of ballast weight to your tractor. 
You typically need more than one form of ballast weight to be safely planted to the ground. Again, reference your operator manual. Sometimes it's not in the tractor manual, sometimes it's in the loader manual. So look in there as well. Um, you know, if you need front ballast weight, normally you would find that in the tractor manual because you're gonna hang it on the tractor itself when you're using like a brush hog or something on the back and you need to offset that. Um, but when you need rear ballast weight, typically that's only gonna be if you have a front end loader. So you're using your bucket, you're using a grapple, um, you're using, what else, a bale spear, you're using pallet forks, all that kind of stuff when you're lifting lots of heavy stuff up front and then you need lots of heavy stuff on back to counteract that and so that's one of the main reasons why we are sponsored by rimguard these guys right here all right i take it very seriously when i wanted to be sponsored i try to find sponsors that are widely applicable to my audience that are that are watching my channel on a regular basis and you can't even see rimguard it's hiding inside these tires it's liquid ballast that's in there it's adding hundreds of pounds to the back of this tractor it comes standard inside the summit tractor one of the many features that come standard on the summit why we've partnered with them as well but it's a huge component and with all that liquid ballast weight that's in there if you forget or you're too lazy i'm talking about myself at times to properly ballast when i'm going to go use the front end loader you at least have those hundreds of pounds there, right? And the Summit is actually one of the heaviest tractors in its class, and so that extra weight also makes a big difference. But the majority of modern tractors these days, the subcompacts and the compacts, are too light. They've been taking steel out of them. They're not like the old farm tractors that a lot of us grew up riding around, and you're gonna tip right over. I mean, get back to that pole. Over 80% of you guys said you've been under ballasted and been lightweight on your tractor. So that's a huge deal and tells you, you need to add more weight. Otherwise, someday I could be reading about one of you as these statistics. And so the liquid ballast is one of the cheapest ways to get ballast weight on a cost per pound basis. It's, it's hidden, it's out of the way. The other forms of ballast weight that you're gonna wanna add on to could be wheel weights, Okay, not every tractor can take wheel weights, but if you can add those, they're also out of the way, right? You don't have to worry about tying up your three-point hitch, but then you can get three-point weight, all right? And if you have a heavy attachment, that's always an option to have and better than nothing, but there's a lot of downsides to using like a tiller or a brush hog as well. We've talked about those and it's a trade-off. You can see right here how compact this is. And so your overall length is a lot shorter. And if you're in an open field, no big deal, but if you have to navigate around buildings, fences, between trees and, and anything else, or even on uneven ground, um, where you're gonna dig down into things when you're going up and down hills, all that other kind of ballast weight can be super annoying on the back, and having something like this can really be beneficial. Not to mention the fact that you can take these off individually, 70 pounds or 41 pounds at a time. And so if you wanted to get some front ballast weight in your bucket, for example, when you're using something on the back end, you can just throw these in your bucket or you can hang them in different locations. You guys will use these as extra uh, ballast weight on box blades to get some more kind of weight or down pressure almost on there to really dig through things. Um, I don't have them mounted on here right now, but we sell hitch hangers too. And so if you have a quick hitch, like the Spico quick hitch or the John Deere iMatch, there are these weight brackets that sit on either corner. You can add additional ballast weight there and then still have your three point available to hook up an attachment to. And so to point out the obvious, for those of you that don't know, I'm a tractor attachment dealer, all right? It's my job to sell tractor stuff to you guys. That's, somebody's gotta do it. I'm the guy that's doing it, all right? So I want to explain the importance of it, not just sell it to you, but let you make your own decision on what you wanna do. Um, I, I think at some point, it's my responsibility to make sure that you understand the options that are available and you gotta walk that line, right, of informing you, showing you where to go to get the information that you need. Ultimately, it's your decision on what you wanna do, but I will say that ballast weight that we sell is one of the most popular things, um, one of the most popular products that we sell, and that's for good reason too, but that also means that, in my mind, a lot of dealers out there are selling tractors to people and not pushing the importance of the safety, and so we're just filling in that gap. And while I've been harping on safety in this video as far as ballast weight goes, there's another really big benefit, which is functionality of your tractor or even efficiency, because when you have all this extra weight on your tractor, it's keeping those rear tires planted to the ground and that's where you're getting all of your power. So whether you need to 
pull something through the ground or you need to lift something up and move it around, if those rear tires are kind of skipping and barely making contact, you're gonna be very inefficient and ineffective and constantly have to slow down and rebalance your load. And so if you can maintain traction and power on the ground, you're gonna get your jobs done a lot quicker too. A couple other safety points really quick. Um, wheel spacers, all right, to make your tractor wider this way also can be very, very helpful. A lot of the smaller tractors, especially uh, the one series, two series, and even the three series, man, they can tip over easy side to side too. And so if you can get wheel spacers and widen even just a couple inches, is gonna make a big difference there. Um, you may also have reversible wheels where you can have a narrow and a wide position on your wheels. So if you you know cut your, your wheel and your tire in half uh, this way, you would notice that the that center hub plate is not right in the middle. It's gonna be offset one way or the other. And so that gives you a, a wide and a narrow position. Look into that too. And then lastly, your roll bar, all right? And so these things are a, a love-hate relationship for a lot of us. You know, you whack your garage door, you're whacking tree limbs, all that kind of thing, and they seem to get in the way. And so you wanna remove them or at least have them folded down. Really important to have it up if at all possible. And I've been guilty of this at times myself too. Um, it's, there's a whole checklist of things you probably need to do every time you hop on your tractor, right? But um, if the roll bar is up, again, reference your manual, normally they will say that you wanna have your seatbelt on because if the tractor tips over to the side, then that seatbelt's gonna hold you in place and within the kind of the safety dimensions that the ROPS bar covers. If your roll bar is down, they typically say to have your seatbelt off, all right? And the reason is, is there's gonna be nothing to protect you if that tractor rolls over. And so if you're strapped into the seat, you're gonna get crushed. So if you don't have your seatbelt on with a roll bar down, then at least you have a chance to hop off the tractor and get out of the way before it rolls over on you. And of course, probably the most important reason for a ROPS is so you can put your Rhino Hide canopy on there. Get out of the sun, okay? Toughest canopy on the market, lightweight, durable, easy to take on and off, made in the USA. Get yours from tractorcanopy.com. That's gonna wrap it up for us today, folks. Again, this is a refresher, right? It's always good to have refreshers and we do them from time to time. We've made a lot of other safety videos too. So if you want to get some more in-depth understanding about that, then make sure you check out that playlist. One of the great things about the ballast weight we sell is that we make a lot of bundles, all right? We make bundles with the Versa bracket, with those hitch hangers, uh, even with tractor attachments. So a lot of the front end attachments will make um, cheaper weight bundles because we can pack everything together and send it along to you. And so a really effective way to get that ballast weight. If you're gonna get a grapple or a set of pallet forks or something like that, get the ballast weight at the same time along with it. You'll see that bundle option in the listing. It's gonna be the cheapest way for you to get it. It's gonna keep you safe then. You don't have to worry about it. So check it out at goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country every day of the week. If you enjoyed today's video, we have over 700 other videos out there too. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.